Excellent! What's up guys and welcome to my quick review of the EVGA GTX 1060 Superclocked, the 6 gig version, mind you, not the lowly 3 gig version that shouldn't even be called a 1060, but coming in at $260, just $10 more than Nvidia's $250 MSRP, this card has some standout features that make it a great choice in the mid $200 range. If you're impatient, just click the link for it down in the video description and throw money at the screen, or continue watching as I explain myself. Either way, if you go down to the description, the like button is down there too, just saying. So let's start with aesthetics, and I'd like to say that this card looks pretty nice. I will say that this card looks pretty nice. It is a dual slot, open cooler with a single fan. It's black with some silver accents and lettering. No LEDs to be seen on the card, which is fine by me, and also no back plates. So the seven inch reference design PCB is exposed, but since it's black, it's not hideous or anything. Anything like that. Since the 1060 uses the reference PCB but not the original reference blower cooler, the whole card is just shy of 7 inches long, about 175 millimeters, and the 6 pin PCI Express power connector is down here at the end of the PCB. The only real difference between this and the reference PCB design, which uses the reference, uses a, an extension to put that out at the end of the blower cooler. Anyway though, beyond that we've got identical specs to all GTX 1066 gig cards with a Pascal GP106 GPU doing the heavy lifting built on 16 nanometer Pascal architecture with 4.4 billion transistors. The GP106 is paired with 6 gigabytes of 192 bit GDDR5 memory at 8000 megahertz effective clock speed and rounding out the specs, you have 10 streaming multiprocessors, 1,280 CUDA cores, 80 texture units, 192 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, 48 ROPs, and a 120 watt TDP. Sadly, there is no SLI bridge on this card, so no traditional SLI support, but that was Nvidia's call, whether you like it or not, so deal with it. And video outs, finally, are three DisplayPorts 1.4s, one HDMI 2.0B, and one DVI, just like the 1080 and 1070 that came before it. For overclocking, I of course used EVGA's Precision X utility and ended up tacking on a 95MHz GPU clock offset and a 250MHz bump to the memory clock with the power and temp sliders maxed. At stock, the card's base clock is 1607 and the boost is 1835, but with that overclock just mentioned, it jumped up to 1702 base, 1930 boost, and 2100 max. That max clock can be deceptive though, as after temps evened out, the stable boost clock was about 2037 to 2050 megahertz on average, which is pretty standard for a GTX 1060. Temperatures were very reasonable considering how small the cooler is, hitting 79C under full load, so just a little bit cooler than the reference design. That is well overclocked though, and with the fan speed also well overclocked, ranging from 40 to 51%. Here's some fan noise testing so you can hear for yourself. We're going to start with idle. Here's 45% fan speed, about the average I was at while gaming. Here's 70% fan speed. And here's 100% proving that no one wants to run their fan at 100% all the time because it's loud. Moving on to benchmarks, I tested this card at 1920 by 1080, which is the proper resolution for this GPU, and here are my results. Okay, it is conclusion time, and I think the biggest question you'll want to ask yourself is should you get a GTX 1060 6 gig or an RX 480 8 gig? And that is a tough choice. The 1060 6 gig is clearly faster right now when tested across a range of games, old and new, but the RX 480 has shown some promising gains in titles that implement certain DirectX 12 features that leverage asynchronous compute. Availability is also a concern with my quick and purely anecdotal look at current stock levels on Newegg this morning revealing that 7 of 9 RX 480 models are in stock, while just 6 of 13 GTX 1066 gig variants are in stock, with the superclocked model being one of the unavailable ones. All that said, if you want the right now performance of the GTX 1060, I think this is a very good choice. It's small and quiet enough for HTPC use or small form factor builds. Overclocking was right up there in the same range with larger, more overbuilt cards, although sustained clocks will probably be just a little bit lower than ones with a larger cooling solution. And at $260, again, it's just $10 more than the MSRP. 
whereas other variants of the 1066 gig want 300 bones or more, which is a significant markup at this price. I would love to hear what you guys think of this card though, so leave me your comments down in the comments section below. Links to this card on Amazon and my Paul's Hardware store where you can buy shirts, mugs, and pint glasses are also in the description. Hit the like button and get subscribed if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.